So how does someone who missed the rapture get saved? Well, first of all, they have to not take the mark of the beast. But there are several things that the Bible talks about when it comes to salvation during this period called the tribulation. First of all, it's endure to the end. Go to Matthew chapter 10, and verse 22. Remember, that comes back over here. And so what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 10, and verse 22, is for people during that time. And in Matthew chapter 10, and verse 22, we read, But ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. So the way to be saved is to endure to the end. Okay, how can you go seven years without eating? That's my question. Uh, now maybe some people say in the middle, so they say it's divided in three and a half and three and a half. So maybe the mark of the beast isn't given till the middle. Still, how can you go three and a half years without eating? Remember what we read and it said, no man can buy or sell, save he that had the mark. So how do you buy food? How do you eat if you can't buy and sell, if you can't buy food? That'd be a long fast, three and a half years, or seven years, whatever the case may be. So I think that'd be nine near impossible, don't you? For a person to be able to say, no, I don't want the mark of the beast, and then fast for three and a half years. Now, some people think, well, I'm going to forage around in the woods. And I'll live off a of deer and raccoon and, and I'll eat turkey meat. and I'll, um, The Bible says a whole lot of the forest is going to burn up. Well, I'm going to go out and I'm going to eat fish. I'm going to eat fish for the rest of my life. I'll just live in a sailboat. The Bible says much of the seas will turn to blood. So don't get this idea in your mind, well, I don't need to get saved today. I'll, I'll, I'm a country boy. I'm a survivor. I'll just live for, you know, and I'll just live out in the woods. Uh, they'll have satellites, they'll have trackers, they'll have all sorts of drones. How, how do you think you would escape a one world government when literally the whole world is against you, one person? I don't see that happening very easily. So I don't see just enduring to the end is enough. So you go to the Bible and you say, well, what does the Bible say? Well, go to Revelation chapter 6, and here we find some people that lived during the time of the tribulation, according to the Bible, that were saved. And look what happened to them. Now, what does it mean saved? When I say saved, what do I mean? I mean your soul is saved from going to hell. Being saved means when you die, your body goes to the, to the dust and your soul goes to heaven. Well, here we have some people whose soul went to heaven during the time of the tribulation. How did they get there? Revelation chapter 6, verse 9 through 11. Revelation chapter 6 and verse 9 says, And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on earth? Huh. And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. So here you have the souls of people in heaven that were killed. Now let's go to Revelation chapter 20. Who could have killed them? Well, Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4. Revelation chapter 20 verse 4, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So the Bible says they were beheaded. So it sounds like you would have to be beheaded during the time of the tribulation by saying, I will not worship you and I will not take your mark. Well, the Bible teaches that the Antichrist will say to such people, oh, okay, well, fine, we'll just, we'll just uh, pass a law that if you don't take my mark, that, that we'll cut your head off. And it's interesting that it's said, and, and who knows if this is true, but it's said that many countries all around the world have bought guillotines. They say here in America they have a bunch of guillotines. And uh, many people are trying to argue that the, the most humane way to put someone to death is with a guillotine. Because, boom, no pain. So in the Bible we see the people that say no to the mark of the beast and allow themselves to be beheaded, those are those whose souls go to heaven. So that sounds very different 
than salvation today. Today we're saved by believing. Today we trust in the blood that was shed for us. Over here it sounds like you've got to shed your own blood for God to accept you. That sounds very, very, very different, does it not? So this is a, a way different. It's not just believe and be saved. It doesn't sound like it's once saved, always saved in the tribulation. Your salvation in the tribulation depends upon your dying for Jesus. Now, it looks like faith plus works to me during this time. So when I look at this, I see faith plus works. And I see that because I read my Bible. And I'm going to take you to the scriptures where I see faith plus works. And to me, it sounds like a work to lay down your neck for Jesus. It sounds like a work to reject the Antichrist and say, No, I will not accept you and I will not worship you. To me, that sounds like a work. Now, you might say, well, that's not a work. Okay, but it sounds like it. It was work back here for them to take an animal and sacrifice it. You tell me it's not work to, to uh, give yourself up and give up your life? That's not enduring to the end. That's saying, Jesus, I'm going to die for you. Revelation chapter 12, and verse 11. Look at what the Bible says. These are passages written to the tribulation period, and this is what it says. Revelation 12, 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Who is this? These are people during the tribulation. So yes, they need to see Jesus dying on the cross. Yes, they need to realize who Jesus is. But they loved not their lives unto the death means they died as martyrs. And so they had to die as a martyr for Jesus. That seems like a very different plan of salvation than the one we have today. Go to Revelation chapter 14 and verse 12. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 12, speaking of the tribulation. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. Hmm, that's what they had to do back then. And the faith of Jesus. So faith plus works. Keeping the commandments. That's works. Faith. Hmm, faith plus works. And look at verse 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. This is tribulation saints. So it sounds like works, does it not? Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. Revelation 12, 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God. That's works. And have the testimony of Jesus. That sounds like faith. So in the tribulation period, I see it sounds like faith plus works. Do you see that? Do you understand that? There's people out there that don't read their Bible. There's people out there that say, nope, you're saved the same way in the whole Bible. And they get a hold of this, thank God, and they preach this. So they're preaching the right gospel, saved by faith. But they tell you, but if you miss the rapture, just believe and you'll be fine. So a guy can say, well, I believe in Jesus. All right, I'll take the mark because you offered it. and You know, okay, I'll half-heartedly grudge, begrudgingly worship the Antichrist, but I still believe in Jesus. Is that, is that salvation? No, Jesus even said, no man can serve two masters. It's a choice. You have to choose Jesus or the Antichrist. If you choose Jesus, you'll either starve to death or they'll hunt you down and behead you because you're not going along with the system. And so it sounds like you'll have to give your life up for Jesus. So how did you endure to the end? I guess you have to endure to the end of your life. The tribulation is very different than today. There's no guarantee of salvation in the tribulation. It doesn't say that souls were saved by simply believing in Jesus. It doesn't say they're saved by just believing in Jesus' blood. Over and over and over, as you look at the verses, it sounds like it's enduring to the end and rejecting the end of Christ and giving your life for Jesus. Sounds like works. Sure, there's some faith involved, but faith plus works, not faith alone. So now is the best time to be saved before the rapture. We're still here. The rapture hasn't happened yet. Trust in Jesus' blood, and then you'll go with the rapture. Because if you miss the rapture, it sounds like it's going to be way different, way different for you. Um, today, when we're saved, we're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. That's in Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. But I don't see any verses in the Bible 
talking about the tribulation where it says someone is sealed with the Holy Spirit. We don't see that. Do people even get the Holy Spirit in the tribulation? Today, we receive the Holy Spirit by faith. Then, do they get the Holy Spirit? We don't have any verses that say yes or no. So it's hard to understand. It's hard to say that it's the same way to be saved in the tribulation. Because Paul says the church age is for the bride. And the bride is the church. So the bride goes up. So these people that are left behind, are they going to be part of the bride too? There's a lot of questions. Things that are different are not the same.